I will kick things off. So welcome, one and all, to the Opus Magnum 2023 Weeklies. This is our 11th week, penultimate week, vaccine template. It is our second production puzzle for this year, and the first normal one. <laughs> um, brought to us by Yosh. Um, so we, we have Yosh here in chat. So where did Hello. this puzzle come from, Yosh? Oh, it come it came from this extremely gnarly workshop puzzle. I'm gonna post a PNG in the Discord channel. And then I'm gonna link it in the Twitch uh, chat. So yeah, just to... why why isn't it loading? Oh, because I have to copy the link. So this so the workshop puzzle in question is called Synthetic Phoenix Down. It's a completely, uh, like, a typical workshop fair. Just, oh, hey, I made a nice output. I don't really care about it, how it is to solve it. It's just huge for no reason. And then I saw, wait, so it's uh, this huge polymer, and every single segment of the polymer contains four Vitae and two Mors, and the input already has a Vita. So that was like, huh. Well, that's interesting. The Glyph of Anemismus outputs one Vita and one Morris, and in this puzzle you need Morris, but you're given none of the input, so you have to use the Glyph anyway, and you're given Vita and the input, which means this puzzle isn't even used to throwing away VT or Morris, like it's usually done whenever you have an imbalance in the in, of the two atoms in the output, if it's not like designed well with the inputs. Hmm, that's an interesting thing. I wonder if I could just strip away all the fucking bullshit and just have an interesting puzzle. <laughs> I oh, I can do that. I and then I just have away the bullshit. <laughs> And then I just removed all the bullshit, and then I just said, okay, two inputs, stable as we taught it, elemental water, here we go. I... First step was, uh, first step was, okay, so what are we going to name it? First step, uh, first it was called poison container, and it was free space, and I didn't feel, I didn't, I didn't vibe with it. Because, like, I knew people were going to cheat it, I knew people weren't going to find the intended soul path, and people were just going to make waste. So I wanted to punish that. So that's why it's in production, because now you can't make waste. And so then I rename it to Vaccine Template, because, oh hey, there is a modest, like, death in the middle, uh, uh, surrounded by Vitae life. Oh, that's how vaccines work. You you take some neutral down version of the virus, and then your body learns how to do it, and then the Lord just is an... It's the alchemy version of that, with training the humors of the body and all that good I, stuff. I just wanted to set remark back when you mentioned stripping away the bullshit. That is actually, I've always found that to be like a good ass, like puzzle design motif or attitude to have. Stripping away the bullshit usually makes a puzzle more interesting because you're just kind of keeping the interesting part of the puzzle. Exactly. So, yeah, and, I think and, that's what kind of happened. And like, and like for the small chamber sizes, I have a little bit of a mini electronics retrospective to deliver to y'all right now, and it will skip over Opus Magna for comedic uh, effect. Oh. So we begin with space chem. In a space chem, each chemical reactor is your typical ten by eight fair. It's limited size, and the symbols you place need to be placed strategically, because otherwise you're going to paint yourself into a corner and have just a soul that, and have a, like, a unfinished soul that isn't going to be able to be completed, because, oops, you messed up somewhere, you need to reassign it. In Infinifactory, sure, there are ways to yeet blocks out of bounds, but they, those are cheat dissolves, and even then, in that game, some of the levels uh, place you indoors, so you still have finite space. In TS100, you have that each level consists of your norm of your traditional 4x3 grid of nodes, and each node can only contain so many lines of code. In Shenzhen I slash O, you have that uh, the motherboard is finite, and you have a finite number of... So you can only place a finite number of microcontrollers in each of one of those. 
contain, can only contain a finite number of lines of code, etc. In Exafunks, sure, you can shit four billion lines of code into your Exa, but if you do, the game is gonna call you a fucking idiot and not gonna let you in on the leaderboards because your soul must fit, must fit that size limit or else you can't play with the big leagues and you can't optimize shit. You can't even see the leaderboards because it says you're a fucking idiot. In Molex and Tez, you have a finite grid, and each of the manipulators can only contain so many instructions. In Lost Call BBS, which has three optimization minigames, we have Chip Weather Professional, in which you have one metric in its area, and it can't go, like, it can't explode to infinity. In <laughs> The Forbidden Path, we have that it must be done in a finite number of cycles, and you only have so many generations, uh, you only have so many instructions, so many evolution rules, and in its flagship optimization title, 20th Century Food Court, you have uh, that you have a finite grid, and you can only place so many uh, modules, and you can only place so many wires. And now we have Opus fucking Magnum out there being like, Oh, don't like your finite space. Oh, I guess we can give you infinite space. No! I love Why is it like the, that? I love the ability to create arbitrary expressive designs in Opus Magnum, which is why the infinite kind of makes it the only thing that is standing out versus all the other games. But yes, if you want the same level of challenge, you've got to do something like Yes, and production is the thing that brings Opus Magnum back in the line with the other seven Zactronics games, in my opinion, which is why I prefer production over Infinite Space. All right. Maybe I'm not a true Zactronics fan because I love Opus Magnum's Infinity. <laughs> if it's Infinity, then it's going to be a polymer. Otherwise, the Infinity is not justified. Um, uh, all right. So, um, you know... So I think, I, I think that's good, a little good there. Um, we'll move on to the metrics. I haven't actually given any thought as to which metrics. So um, is there any, uh, do, do any of you lovely people have opinions on which metric to do first? I only really personally did cycles, but I have curiosities about cost. <laughs> Uh, either one would make me happy, but I will only see the solution that I worked on if we do cycles. Um, alright. Why not cycles? Yeah, we'll start with cycles, because with cost, uh, there's gonna be some interesting, uh, there's gonna be some analysis there that we can't do with, with the cycles, so yeah. Alright. Cycles first. Cycles first. Uh, now for the fun part of figuring out the first cycle solve. I think it's this one. Alright. <clears throat> So, in 10th place, uh, starting our journey at 274 cycles, we have Redstone Paradox with New Solution 1. Good solution. <laughs> Good solution title. Great solution. Nice title. and compact. Tribonder. So, immediately, I think we're going to say that. So, we're seeing the Tribonder motif, which I think is going to remain consistent because it's kind of just the best way to put the um, vaccine template together in the end. Mm -hmm. If you place a Tribonder, it forces. <clears throat> like, there's only one space for the Tribonder to go in the same chamber as the output. Yeah. You can rotate the chamber as an entirety, but you can only get the tribonder to yeah. be in that one specific re orientation relative to the output. So it's going to be very similar any solve that does the tribonder plus output. Yeah, right. Like, mm -hmm. like I literally can't put this even regardless. Of this I literally can't put the tribonder anywhere else. Oh, I I can because I have the overlap mod on, but you can't. <laughs> yeah, no. The 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 over, the the, over, the, 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 the tribonder needs to be put exactly like it was there without uh, yeah it needs to be put exactly where it was in relation to the output glyph and one thing i think we should note here is that there are technically four types of atoms in the output yeah right so have you found sorry you, you go yeah so uh, type number one is the waters that's one type type number two is the vita you pull from the input 
the type number three is the VT you get from the Glyph of Animismus, and type number four is the Mors you get. Sure, the last two are linearly dependent, by which I mean you can flip the Glyph of Animismus 180 degrees, and you'll get the two of them swap. But still, you're gonna need to make a decision. How are you gonna rotate the Glyph of Animismus? Which one do you want to be closest to with the uh, conduit, etc.? Which order do you pull them in? And like, the thing that yeah. you want to be optimizing for is the overall period, almost certainly. There's some latency considerations, but for the most part, it's literally just can you get the assembly chamber to happen in a smaller number of overall cycles? And the order mm -hmm. of pull atoms really makes a difference on that. Indeed. All right. So, um, I think that works there. So, we're moving on to ninth place, coming in at 247 cycles. We have Realliance. Oh, hey, 247, a paragram of the... Uh, an anagram. 274 to 4, 247. I believe my speed solve was 250, so it's... <laughs> it's very similar and we've passed it already. Interesting. Ooh, that's a spicy bond order. That is a spicy Three bond arms order. Three in, in the assembly chamber, which speeds it up quite a bit. Yeah, the, the thing that slows is... Yeah, the thing that slows this down is the uh, is the stabilized VTA management chamber. If if it had more arms, it would be much faster. Oh no! I wonder if it could be on the unused tile instead. There's literally nothing that makes it rotate all the way to the corner. Mm hmm. So that would be fewer instructions. <laughs> we also have notes here, by the way. Yeah, um, I was about to read them, so it's just real quick. It's just nearly forgot to submit this one. Also, I hate restricted area solves. Realliance, not a production enjoyer. Realliance, after my heart. <laughs> but, like, I love the game, so I love so many different things in the game. There's For no production hatred for me. Production puzzles just seem like they're adding extra restrictions for not much co uh, gain. Oh, I think there's benefit, because the whole instructions metric kind of takes this brand new context in a production chamber, which I've always found fascinating. I, right, and if you remember the, um, the particle reconstruction puzzle, that sort of required, required production, so there are ways, but anyway. We had Crimson Crystal Bisection that had conduits in free space, just as an example of a, a situation where one of the things that is unique to production can be used elsewhere. But yeah, like, I, I, I find myself, when I solve free space puzzles, I'm like, damn, I wish I had a conduit here. That would make, uh, that would make transporting actors much easier. Yeah. It's when you run into that problem in free space, though, with infinite space, that's just a skill issue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you say so. <laughs> Alright. Um... Find bronze being 34 cycles record is just a skill issue on the part of the community. I Look, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, the main reason I didn't submit anything to this is because production isn't my, for isn't my uh, favorite thing. That's fine. That's why I label my. That's why I label most of my production puzzles on the workshop with the production tag, so people that don't like production don't have to download it and feel like, wait, I was robbed. This is production. Yeah, I I think production, like I don't know, it, it production kind of attracts different people and kind of repels others. I think it's just yeah, a matter it, of taste, it, really. It attracts the yeah. of the world. Yeah. Like, um, yeah, yeah, like, like me, I've always been like a bit meh on production puzzles. I do enjoy a good production puzzle, but like, it's never been my strongest, like, thing. I've never been a huge, like, goer of it. Um, but I will enjoy it when it comes up. I like, the ones, my favorite ones are always the Brother Mojo, um, vintage ones that are really just really nails hard to solve. Even Bist likes them, and she is a notable production hater. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, but like, and then you look at me, and I've solved all 28 of Rithaniel's uh, uh, uncommon 
uh, unconventional uh, alchemical journal puzzles, and there are 28 extremely brilliant production puzzles, in my opinion. Nathaniel's style is quite um, complete. <laughs> to take as much of what could be done and ask you to do it. Exactly, and that's what I love. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on from there, uh, we will drop 43 more cycles to 204 with Cali Rhesus at 8. And this was the See? last scoring solve submitted, so I'm going to venture a guess that uh, Cali Rhesus spent more time on cost than cycles this week. Yeah. Ooh, just a normal bonder. Nice. Just a normal bonder. Leaves more room for arms, but I'm just trying to see where all the white space in the tape comes from because there are lots of arms that are waiting on other arms. It doesn't look like there's any one specific arm limiting this, unless I'm not looking at the right place. Uh, arm 4 seems to be limiting, which is a shame. Oh, it, it is, also but it has, it has a clock instruction, so it still is limited based on an interaction instead. Clock instructions are when you're limited on something that isn't one instruction tape, but is actually like the interaction between stuff. Mm. I I think it's just a little bit slow to get all your anime or uh, all your vitae out from the uh, right chamber. Possibly. You I only th really go ahead, Zorflex. Oh, um, um, I will say, I guess. For me, it's because like doing the single bond dot, you can you can tell how I think beneficial the multi bonder will be coming up later by looking at this like the way this has to contort the molecule to get all your necessary bonds in using just a single bonder. Like that's a lucky movement that that one even exists to get that third Moore's bond in in the first place. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of pivoting and jiggling around that you have to do to make a single bonder work. You could also make yeah. a second bond of work to speed things up, maybe, but I didn't look at that too much, actually. And if you have a second bonder, then you run into the issue of having incorrect bonds. And then, and then you, you, and then you need to like navigate the intermediaries carefully around the two bonders you've got. And so, I think it's best if you're just going with regular bonders. I think just having one is. Yeah. The smoothest, but by the time you've placed two regular bonders, you have just as many tiles used up as a multi bonder, but with only two thirds as many useful pairs. Exactly, so multi takes four tiles but gives you three pairs, while two bonders gives you only two, so it's just not yeah. helpful. And I guess another mm -hmm. point is that the multi bonders, three bonders, are all at 120 degree angles from each other, and this molecule this has a lot of 120 degree angles between bonds. It's like the ring and the three Moore's bonds, so it lends itself naturally to using a multi bonder. Exactly. And I do think though that this pos this solution could be around 30 cycles faster. If there was a way to delay the drop of the first Vitae, because the way that the conduit and the um, input are arranged, it's actually really in the way. It kind of looks like you can just delay the drop of the first. Yeah, if arm two Vitae. and arm four's instruction tapes were just shifted to the right on their first four instructions by like six cycles. That might actually make this uh, much faster, but no tinkering. Tinkering disallowed. I, 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 will, I will refrain from tinkering. I just noticed that that's the thing holding back the period is that arm uh, two mm -hmm. is going to drop the vitae on the conduit and then it has to be contended with immediately just because the other chamber has mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just take now a, unblocked. I'll, I'll, I'll take a deep breath. And make sure I can stop myself from tinkering. I'm better. I'm better than that. <laughs> also, 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 you know, <laughs> and no, you know, this solve is almost trackless. So true. Arm one's the only track. Only Did uses that track once that track as well. Me. Also, I see. Um, I see. Calyrisus is a minus first enjoyer. That is, I, my my opinion of Calyrisus just went up by like five points there. 
like just then. Ew. And then. Like I think I think I I think I literally edited my soul to make it more Zorflex friendly. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We all we well, and every Polyuresis have that. a spatial preference, not a not a user usability preference. It's just that the plus is on the right side of any track. <laughs> All right. Now I literally place tracks in production chambers, knowing that I have to put the minus end under the uh, the arm, and then I'll grab the track and flip it around so that it goes <laughs> to the plus. <laughs> it's like I've placed the track. Now I have to reverse it so that I am happy. <laughs> OCD is a weird thing. <laughs> no, it's just this community having forty billion weird preferences for things. All right. Um, yeah, my preference is to not solve production puzzles. <laughs> that's, that's fair. <laughs> that's a valid preference. <laughs> okay. Um, so before we move on to seventh, we have uh, the host solve. Uh, this is submitted by Yosh. We'll actually go way down to 142 on the cycle count here. Nice. Okay, so even if Talia saves 30 cycles, it wouldn't matter. It actually would not have mattered, even with those 30 <laughs> cycles. So, fun fact, before I made this solve, the second metric used to be sum. This solve is what killed that. Because this, if you compare this to my other so to my other cycle solve, it was one cycle faster. Because my best at the time was 143, and it had a better sum, so I was like, what the fuck? Oh god, no, 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 I made a puzzle where sum is equal to solve. Where, where sum is equal to cycles, what the fuck? Turns out I, I was wrong on the cycles part. You, I assure you my cycle solve has terrible sum because it is 6p. <laughs> right, and that matters in a production chamber. Yes. Because <laughs> the, su the sum is cycles, uh, cost, and instructions at this point. So yes. 6p just adds a ton more instructions. I can lose two cycles to go 1p and save, I don't know, hundreds of instructions. <laughs> Okay, so okay. looking at this solve, um, I like the right chamber here. Looks very nice. I think it finishes with plenty of time to spare. Um, and the left chamber looks busy. So it's like, where where could you possibly save the cycles? And this uses the Realliance build order of doing most of the sure. ring, yeah, ring first before the Moors comes out. In fact, Moors is the last thing that comes through the conduit. Um, mm hmm I think it comes down to arm one and two doing almost all of the work here. Indeed, that's what I realized when I looked at when I looked at the other cycle cells. I was like, oh wait, if I just shoved four billion more arms by four billion, me like three more into the uh, into the build chamber, I would be faster. Also, this note uh, how twenty three. Yeah. Also, note how. The, the right chamber has arms of one, two, and three, and the left chamber has uh, no. The, the left chamber has arms one, two, three, and the right chamber has arms four, five, six. You thought the build chamber through first, I assume. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just placed them and then ooh, gonna reorder them so the numbers are pretty. Got it. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yes, I definitely. Sorry, I definitely did like my build chamber first, so that's why I thought. Because it's all depending on the build chamber. I think as long as your small chamber isn't limiting them. If, if, if I wanted to go do that, then arm four would be the arm one because it's the one that starts first. That's true. But yeah, like this was the uh, the solve that's killed the uh, the sum metric. So if people want to optimize sum, then go ahead. According to Rebex in the chat, four billion is approximately equal to more billion. That's true, Rebix. Well, well spotted. I've, I've oh, no. never, um, I've never obtained a more billion of anything. So actually, I think <laughs> the reason that it is slow, and this is actually never going to be faster than period sixteen, is because arm one is the only arm with access to the conduit, and so every grab on conduit has to come from arm one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because none of the others actually have access. And four atoms through the conduit. If you have only one arm that can grab it, there's a fundamental limit at 16 R. Yeah, I yeah, think. But, yeah. the th but the, you want to know the fun part? Mm -hmm. This the the 143 cycle solve had two arms accessing the conduit. 
Yeah, right, interesting. Um, because I can the only other spot that would have accessed that conduit is this is the hex where the water regent currently sits. Yeah, so I swapped the, the piston there and the water, and then and then it turned out to be faster than my at the time 162 cycles. Right. Because the thing is, even if even though arm one's limiting, arm two is still almost limiting. So it's really just those two arms doing all the work, not just like arm one doing. So mm -hmm. yeah, so to like to reduce to get this More to get arms. a faster rate and. To get the arms to reset quicker, you really need like more than two arms, I guess, grabbing all the work. So we'll see. We'll, we'll watch out for that in future souls because mm -hmm. next up we take another sizable drop to 114 cycles with username right. void. This isn't a speed solve, is it? No, this is a no username void optimized this week. You Ooh, love to see it. Attempt. Look I, at all these. That arms. is a lot of arms. That's about as many as we're gonna see moving forward. There's li literally only one more arm that you could put here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the only thing that's limiting it is because there's a track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this looks very much optimized. It's period seventeen though, which makes me wonder why it isn't fourteen. Arm five. Oh, it's because is arm limiting. five, arm five's instruction tape limits it. Right, because it does a cup. Yeah, it does a lot of um, retracting and extending here to grab from the conduit. And it's there's an extra retract instruction that doesn't do anything. It's on odd tape length, and I thought, why isn't it pivoting if it's odd number? It's because it does a double retract before the rotate, and that double retract, the second one, is completely useless. Oh, it does! Oh no! Oh no! There it is, right there. It'll just retract. Please instruction. don't tinker. No tinkering. I'm not gonna touch it. I promise. This is a. Tinker. It's a question though of whether it's a tertiary save of just an instruction or whether the period could be 16 if that wasn't the case. Also, gotta say oh. impressive. I gotta say impressively high cost. Because in production. Yeah, three seventy. Oh yeah, I... well the three is three seventy is impressively high for a production cabinet this limited. You can easily make it more uh, pr higher cost by swapping the pistons. Actually, the highest I ever submitted was three seventy five for this, but I know I had a four hundred plus one that was an iteration that I never submitted. Pistons are just really good at making and costly, and that's not even intentionally putting tracks under every arm that don't get used. Wonder if um. I don't know, it makes me wonder about cost de-optimization, whether there's a way to make that interesting. I don't... Like, it is in sure production. <laughs> yeah, in production. Ors, Evil Ors 2019's uh, sum category was cycles plus area, which meant cost is irrelevant, and everyone who wanted to had fun just cost anti-optimizing within the, their cycles area budget. <laughs> just add a bunch of useless track and add pistons where they're not needed. Yeah, all the swing space, that's a piston on a track. Everything else, calcifiers. <laughs> Whoever crashes the stream as game first wins. <laughs> <laughs> or Zoroflex <Zorflies> computer. <laughs> I mean, I have an equilibrium glyph at 2 to the 31. Have fun. No! <laughs> no! That, that sort of floating point uh, arithmetic stuff would crash the game. Absolutely would. But also, good luck scrolling the screen all the way out that far. Yeah, Zoom Tool's not that good. <laughs> Unfortunately. Alright. You've complained about Zoom Tool for the last time. Unzooms. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, yeah, sure no, there's some no need, hex out. No need to use the Zoom Tool this week. How does that feel, Zoroflex? Actually feels good. It is nice, because uh, I'm, I'm if sure I want to, I can I'm just sure speed up or slow down with complete impunity. It's nice. I'm sure there's some hex editing trick you can do to place a, a glyph of equilibrium way the hell out of the way. I've accidentally done that even myself without trying to. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right, so things. I think we can move on to sixth place. All right, sounds good to me. Um... Dropping down just two cycles, uh, we have a look at Mr. Puzzle. 
at 112. It's an emergency. Call 112. It's an emergency. Single Only European things will get this. Single bunda. Oh, whoa. Mr. Puzzle and Calyaresis both going against the multi bunda green. But, I do, but that is a build fast it. build. That is quite fast. It, um, I, yeah, I really, you should have a look at just how regularly that bond of fires here. It does all six outer ring bonds in a row. Dodge. Arm 5's dodge actually is the reason that it's a limiting arm. Oh, ouch. It is. Yeah, <laughs> he, yeah, it has to move there. If it didn't have to do that, then this would also be 5G cheaper, I think. Interesting. Yeah, because you wouldn't need the that extra X of the uh, track. Having having three arms that can reach the conduit is also very helpful here. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And also, yeah. those three arms can also reach the um, water region if they want to. The vials uh, are from a mod released just now. I uh, if I recall correctly. Mr. Puzzle made a mod. You should because mod Mr. Mr. Puzzle, Puzzle in your chat. Because Mr. Puzzle is amazing like that. <laughs> mod the I mod think Mr. Me. Puzzle also made a no-grabbing Moors mod the, uh, for that week. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. actually still in... in no, I'm, I think I took it out because I had to. I was about to say, if it's still <laughs> active, you would not have succeeded on this puzzle because you have to grab Moors to get it off the conduit. That would have you been have to stupid. Grab it quite about, you have to grab it a lot, actually. <laughs> And you can't get it off the anime cliff. <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't remember its official name. I just refer to it as the anime cliff. It's called the Glyph of Animismus. The Glyph of Animismus. And a cinnamon. <laughs> <laughs> it this input chamber looks like it works down to 15R. Uh, so it's the output chamber that's stuck at 17. Yeah, it's not the bonder that's the problem. So, I, I mean, I really I, like the build I on the I think the main issue is arm is arm five having to dodge. No, 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 that's not the main issue. Well, it'll, it is one of the main issues, I think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's not like the core issue. There's right. probably other core issues. Right, yeah, it's still like a pretty busy arm even without that dodge. It, it's really hard to find any local improvements here, which is not really what I've been trying to do. I'm just wondering why it's limited. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it just looks like a well-optimized solve, yeah. Honestly. 17 like, was a stopping point where, like, my one single five-hour session, I got 17R at one point, and then thought, okay, here's a stopping point, and then I got better and better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll move on from there. We'll see. We'll see if the, the single bonder returns. Um, in we're fifth, in the top five. In fifth place, dropping down five cycles to one oh seven is Fiesta Land. Wondering if it is still Pivot Week. That would be cool. Should do another Pivot <laughs> Week. Yeah, this is still Pivot Week. Let's see if it is. Oh, I love Arm Six's instruction tape. Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> <laughs> trackless oh nice trackless. and this one's period 16 which makes sense because it dropped about five cycles trackless and i'm pretty sure the left chamber doesn't have any rotates at all which is cool as well um oh yeah it's all trans it's all translations it's hilarious pistons and pivots oh i love arm three in the right chamber i love arm three yeah, arm three is really good here. I like um, it's got clutch access points here. The reason I like arm three is because I love it when you have fixed length arms in production that are of length two or three that have the space to do a swing while having atoms grabbed. Right, and it's got like multiple jobs. It's pull on its weight. Yeah, and it's swinging the atoms. Normally, that would cost. Uh, like it, it, collision issues with the chamber boss, but here it's placed in a clutch space, and there is a free hex even. I, I really. Go ahead. Sorry, is that is that the cont contender for swing of the week? Oh yeah, <laughs> maybe. We'll, yeah. Uh, all right, we'll we'll we'll, we'll open up um, rotate of the week and just have that. Hit the chamber walls more closely than ever before. 
Mm. It flirts dangerously with disaster, that arm. My okay. favorite but thing I still, is the I still like the what arm drop. six is... Sorry, I still like what arm six is doing with the pivots. Mm -hmm. I think there's notes here? Yeah, I was just gonna, about to read the notes. Um, so... Reading from Fiesta Land, we started out with a 128 cycle solve that did all three water at the end. Kind of like Mr. Puzzles. Well, that's just me saying that. Um, sneaking one of them in at the start dropped us to 107. The wonky pivot approach you see here saves 10G. The assembly used to be a bit more straightforward. So that was actually not like... A, a set thing from the start. We need to have all pivots because it's a really cool fast motif. It's just saves 10 G. <laughs> yeah, like like tracks with another piston on it or something. Yeah, yeah, like uh, the the this solve here reminds me of the uh, one of my solves of uh, one of those puzzles I've mentioned in Rathaniel's. Uh, production uh, puzzle uh, series called Mind Killer. Ironically, the chambers are the same size, and it is a Vita Mars puzzle. And in that puzzle, I have an output chamber that does one rotate, and then it's just push, and then it's just extend, retract, and pivots. Because it's the output is gnarly. <laughs> so, I but guess... yeah, like. Sorry, I guess I guess one thing to note about this solve uh, is that all three meet all three Vita. Um, come out before the moors. Uh, and we did see that with a couple of previous solves, but I really like this one pivot in specific. I think it's arm six is a second pivot. Um, after the moors gets bonded here, uh, this is a really sick pivot here to get that water on immediately. And then arm eight kind of grabs, you need to do a couple more pivots, get the final one in, and pivots Oh out yeah, there. that pivot is really great. But the unfortunate thing is... Now, arm 8 has to do a double pivot to set up the empty space. And it has to grab and the last. Yeah. True, yeah. but uh, yeah. arm 7 is the only arm that could put water under the center of the multibonder, and since it needs four, four cycles to get from the first water to the next, that double pivot doesn't actually limit anything. Yeah, but it's, it's unfortunate from an instructions point of view. Fair, but I think there's no way you'd be gaining rate by doing anything differently. True. I, yeah, I do. I don't. I do kind of. Because I remember Biggie was mentioning like this being a natural stopping point for rate. And uh, speaking of, uh, in fourth place, also 107 cycles. Uh, just coming <laughs> in at 305 um, cost. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot what the secondary was for a second. Don't mind me. Oh, so we have a so we have a, a primary um, time. We do two bonders. Two exist. individual bonders. Ah, oh, right. This one. This one. I I I, look, I had a look at this one, and my god, it is pretty. That arm six is just magical. This has a lot of uh, area ties broken by cycles vibes to it. <laughs> <laughs> And I guess area is the like the zero the metric in this puzzle. <laughs> this is a period fifteen actually. It manages to be fifteen R, but it has so much higher latency because it does double stations. Oh so damn! This is it. Actually, fifteen R with higher latency. Oh, it's actually it's yeah, a but completely different rate. That's funny. The the fact that that, that this manages. Two stations and look at that. So it takes the partial, the thing where it's like one mo uh, the moss and the two vitae, and then it has the time to get go in, get an extra, get a water, and then it just goes back and gets uh, the third vitae. And all the while it's doing that, it's not crashing with the next input. Right, and it can kind of start with the moss vitae before the template actually outputs a bit here. So I can yeah. already prepare for the second yeah, like retake. Output and then pivot at the same time. Yeah, exactly. Arm six outputs and then arm five pivots, and it's just it's just magical. Yeah, it's this actually is really slick. choreographed. This is a magical soul. Well done. Also, good use of um I, I I don't think this is the last we'll see of this, but 
I guess in this solve, it's different because of the individual bonders, the um, way the water gets bonded, um, making use of input suppression, which I think a couple of the other solves um, didn't use input suppression quite as much, and it does really help with giving you a more convenient water regent placement, knowing that you can just slot it there and it won't crash. Especially that first one, the way it swings right in is really cool. Like, mm. very much like whoosh. And the VT just swings right over and blocks it right on time. Much like much like his username, it just whoosh. <laughs> That's a good point. I. It's very clever the way that they've managed to, or he's managed to fit two single bonders in the build chamber. It's yeah. This is a cool idea. I really like this idea. Same number, like we said before. It's the same number of hexes for bonding, but it's 10g cheaper. Mm. And also, I'm noticing that one of the bonders is exclusively being used for uh, Vaite Moore's bonding. Yeah, and the other one is exclusively used for bonding the watchers. Good division of labor, that. Um, another thing, uh, is a, there's not one, not two, but three non-piston arms. Uh, also helping mm -hmm. keeping the cost down. Which and Arm goes 6 on, is yeah. doing a lot. Arm 6 is doing some swings as well, uh, non trivial swings. It's swinging a, pr a pretty large thing around. The Arm 6. It's swinging the large thing back and forth. Like a sledgehammer, like boom, 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 get the atoms on and then output. <laughs> Alright. Moving on though. To our top three. The third place. In third place, we will drop down a single cycle to 106 with Ebenov. Well done. Interestingly, Ebenov had the opposite problem of Fiesta Land, where if they got rid of the swings, it would have cost 20G. <laughs> This looks so similar to the build order because Arm Seven has that same double pivot. Oh, this does. It looks. V this, this is. Just... This, I, I, if I didn't know any better, I'd say this is a, an identical build order. Although I think the start. It is. is. No, it's the same build order. Right. Okay. Yeah. Arm Arm Five is the one that was Arm Seven in Fiesta Lands, where there's only one thing that can grab the um, water, and it's waiting on a double pivot. I don't understand where this one saves one latency, honestly. Maybe it just gets everything out of the first chamber faster. Because the second cha the building chamber is identical to Fiesta Lands. This is the same solve. Yeah. yeah. That's a good question. It might just be, it might just be uh, the, like, Animismus chamber working faster yeah. or something. I don't know. Yeah, my thought was the Animismus chamber. I, that that um that Moors has a very long journey to get to the uh, conduit, but it is the last mm. one. Mm. It doesn't have the triple retract. Says somebody the in the chat. Triple retract is in username voids. Username <laughs> voids. Oh, we yeah. have the triple retract. Well, we're not comparing this against the triple retract uh, build. <laughs> So yeah, same idea, Moors comes out last, and the building order is one that we have absolutely seen before. The clutch pivot, which is probably still at this point, pivot of the week, if you want to have that. Um, I... Shout outs? Huh? Oh. Shout outs to Arm 2, giving that Vitae a little hug before it gets sent off well, to the One thing I'm noticing right. is that... One thing I'm noticing is that the right chamber starts processing the, the next step, keeps processing inputs. While you're while you're adding the last water, and it just never stops. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, I mean, when you're when you're trying to minimize rate, the downtime in between the old one and the new one is part of that. And this one manages mm -hmm. to get it minimal. Yeah, because yeah, right, you, yeah, it at... just it never stopped pulling outputs on on the right there. It's still doing useful work while adding the last water to the previous output. So this one's period 16. What were the last two periods at? Which, which was 15 with high latency? Yeah. Yes, to learn Mr. Puzzle were both 16. And I yeah. figured, geez, it's just weekly gang and Team 42 now, isn't it? Um, yeah. Yeah, it is. Good. I, oh, right. The weekly gang didn't create this puzzle, so they'll have a scoring solve. I meant no, weekly. It's the weekly, weekly, it's like weekly gang. 
Yeah. Not the weekly gang, the weak gang. <laughs> W-E-A-K. Uh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah, Sorry, I, I forgot that there were two... I forgot that there were two, uh... Homophonas? Two, two homophone team names. Homophony? I don't know what the word is. There's gonna have to be a big drop, though. I just don't know if it's spread between two teams or if I am the next one up. Alright, um... I will put you all out of your misery. So, in second place, at 99 cycles, the weekly wow. game. When I made a wow, stop with stop 101, 100. I sent it in with a title wrong number of digits, and then I got a 99 and said, there's the right number of digits. <laughs> no, 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 no biggie. The full solution title was wrong number of digits, I'm afraid. And then the correct number of digits, yeah. Yeah. Vaccines cost templates. That's well great. observed. Gosh, I w so what is the period here for real? Because I'm only seeing... Um, hey, this is 6 okay, arm, arm 3. Arm 3 is able to actually show us what the true period is. And it looks like it's 15. Yeah, this is a 15R with some extra special case. Yeah, 15R well, with Why is this 6 it looks like there's an in, there's a latency at the beginning that's avoided by doing things differently the second, and third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth time. Oh right, for cases where n does not equal one. Okay. Yeah, because whenever you have to get everything to loop again quickly, so for this one, that's fifteen R. Um, sometimes you're, you're sacrificing latency, but you don't have to sacrifice it on either the first or the last one depending right. on. The Right, like sometimes not fully resetting your arms or something is more beneficial. Yeah, having a different arm takeover, even if it adds a regrab. I saved two cycles to get to the... Like I, did I send the version of mine that loops? Uh, um, I, have a, I have a submission called 14R that loops. That's impressive, wow. Yeah, so, um, so, I, I, alright, back to this solve, though. Um, so, point of difference is that the Morse comes out pretty early. Um, it is, in fact, the second one that comes out, which is, like, as soon as it... You can see here, it grabs a couple of salts, and specifically waits on this second Vitae for the Morse to come out first, because it wants Morse out early, uh, gets the Morse bonded pretty quickly, and just kind of uses that as the common pivot point for the last two sets of Vitae's and Waters. So, I don't that know. I think it's bond like there in the middle, That double bond there in the middle of the build order is pretty satisfying. Well, yeah, this, one, this one in particular is... Well, when seven slides over, yeah. Yeah, that one's a pretty sick one, actually. Covering kind of the conduit and just having this, like, kind of translation at the end. Yeah, and now here it needs to bond this water, and how does it do that? Oh, that's clever, because uh, it gets the, the extra bond with the third Vitae. Yeah. As well, because now it's yeah, before it was only bonded to the Morse, and now it, it's bonded to the two waters that needs to be bonded to, and you can just output. Right, and it happens to really be in a, and it happens to be in a convenient position for you to like translate it back across to get that final water in, pivot it, and then just output. Mm. Yeah, the last well, there's a re grab before the output. The last three moves on this are the same as in mine, but. There's a regrab, unfortunately. Is uh, it was is this arm eight at the bottom here that regrabs? Yeah, arm arm eight has to do a regrab after the product is built. To... Yeah, I'm doing this with enough space in mind to actually get the translate at the end. Yeah, like one thing. That, yeah, one thing we've not really been paying attention to when we've analyzed these solves is what sort of movement is done to do the final output like is it a pivot is it a moving on track is it a rotate etc because in production those things are important considerations to make sure that your final product isn't uh, crashing with the with the chamber walls or like arms of the place. and you're trying to find the best way to get it out as quickly as possible exactly so if one of those options minimizes re-grabs, that's clearly a better- what well, might be a better option. Mm. Mm. Shoutouts to uh, the most expensive solve so far. 
385. Yeah, it's pretty. That's pretty costly. It's very costly. I don't. Seven like, other than adding useless tracks, I don't see ways of improve increasing the cost. Well, there is uh, there is armed eight, which could be transformed into a piston. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're not going to tweak it. We're, we're... There, there are two gap tracks that the arms move into, but you don't need that if you're trying to maximize. But yeah, I don't know if they're... I, I thought it was interesting that this solve and Evanov solve both had a three track shared by two arms in the input chamber. Mm. That's a way... Like The input chamber seems kind of totally secondary as long as it's not limiting there's no reason to try to think too hard about it because yeah we no haven't been yeah. the critical count, but it's different in mine so like the, the, main thing you to, the, the main thing you decide on with the with the left chamber or sorry right chamber is what order do you when do you want the moors to be coming out of the pipeline yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you can get a second which is the earliest that it can be yeah, and like, right. uh, so for my design philosophy for the right chamber is I want there to be a way for people of all skill levels to enjoy, uh, uh, like, some aspect of optimization. Like, if you're not that good at the game, then the challenge is just get out the assets as fast as possible. When you're really good at the game, it's, okay, well, you can get them out as fast as possible because you're just good at it, but in what order do you want them to get out? <laughs> All right, I think it's time to move on to the winning solve. Submitted it by is Team 42. by Team, Team 42. 42. Coming in at 94 cycles. That is the and correct impressed. number of digits. That is the correct number of digits. And eight hours after the puzzle was revealed. <laughs> we have a cycles puzzle where in the metric was one with the primary. Yay. Instead this of... is actually the first solve where the where the animismus glyph takes up three rows. No. True, all the other ones had it slanted, and I thought it was interesting because I was comparing the differences. Uh, Dorfax, no, no, I want to no. use the slow-mo on this one because I did not make it loop. No, 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 this isn't the only one. I think we had one other uh, solve wherein the glyph was uh, placed like that. I don't exactly remember which one, but we uh, we had one. Honestly, do you have access to older submissions? Because I would much rather talk about the one that's just called 14R than try to understand it in this. Um, yeah, sure. I can boot that one up. Um, the, oh, are, I, I, are you I, trying I to it. find your looping solution or? Yeah, I, I know that the looping solve that I submitted was called 14R. Right. Yeah, and it would and, and it would have won because it's at 97 cycles. Yeah. You would have won even without this non-looping nonsense. Yeah, I just didn't. I wanted the number to be as low as it could be. But thank you. Uh, you, you don't I know if the three okay. cycles are going to matter or not. Like I this whole theory, min was number seven. Number go years. down is one of the ways my brain gets dopamine. <laughs> give me that. Give me that dopamine. What do you say, Biggie, about theory min? Theory min is 78, but there's not a way to get 12 R. Yeah. I didn't I, I didn't disprove it, but very much I, I thought 14 R was as far as I would be able to ever take it. Mm. But like uh, uh, but like I'm glad but like it, it, when I look at it, the instructions count is also pretty low. So yeah, yeah like this a... the, 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 that, the, that would have beaten up my end with uh, the sum metric that was axed. True. That is a lot of arms in the build chamber. It's four, and a lot of the others have had five or even six, but the fact that they're both sharing pairs of track gives a lot of freedom of motion in this specific build order, which, mm -hmm. granted, I was sitting there churning through possibilities for like three hours, but I did end up with mm -hmm. this one, and that's 14R. Right, and you don't actually need a re-grab between finishing the product and outputting. Yeah, yeah. because yeah, I'm so... on the track that Arm 3 is already using. So I want to return to something. You remember what I said about how skilled players are going to find a way to figure out the correct sequence of outputs from the conduit? Well, in here we see uh, this sort of design uh, philosophy really shining through because we have the water input, which is a static input, and then we have the conduit, which is sort of a variable input that 
that like changes and only has input some of the time. So I think that really shows through here in this solve that the two inputs, the static input and the variable input, so to speak, are so symmetrically placed in the chamber. Yeah, the symmetry here really helps simplify the search space. Mm -hmm. I, I do, do think that putting the water that comes in second in like kind of an unintuitive place at the bottom was the way that this hit 14R. Like if you watch the water that is pulled over the center of the multibonder and then pivoted down below it, like yeah, that's that, very clutch that because is, that's the hardest part to begin. place. But it saves that double pivot that was in so many of the other solutions. Mm -hmm. Here you can get away with just having a single pivot. Well, it's it's a pivot, and then you you remove. It's like a pivot, but then you retract the pivot. But yeah, it does like the same the job. It does the same job, and th and the result of that is you have the same orientation still, because like a, ca a clockwise and a counterclockwise pivot, they cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. I, I guess um, notably also, and this is not something I thought of while building it, but that worked out, the, the vitae that goes to the top, which is the other furthest traveled atom, only bonds on the right part of the multibonder. So it only needed to move one tile, and the rest was handled by moving the product itself. Mm -hmm. Pretty, okay. So yeah, like at, at the really the high, of motions. Yeah, at the really high end, that's what you gotta think about. Like, how do you minimize the travel path for uh, all of the atoms that you're using? I do like. I don't know how much this really matters, but this. Um, I do like how the um, the pistons on the yeah you know, on the top row and the bottom row of the left chamber. They're always kind of synchronizing their translations, and it lets you... I don't know, it, it gives the arms kind of more rooms to work with translations better, which is... Yeah, as Biggie mentioned, that 14R comes because the output... There isn't, like, an extra regrab needed after the final bond. You can just keep translating. And that works in tandem with arm 3's translation, and you can see arm 1 and 2 both kind of translate um, at, like, this point here. Um, so the translations are kind of working in tandem with each other really nicely. Um, and the solve feels, I don't know, it feels more spacious than the other build orders. And it yeah, just it's literally like you got two track on each of four arms without needing eight tiles to do it. You only needed six. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. A very compact. It, like this solve almost gives me height vibes. I mean, it looks very similar to the electrum separation heights that have been bumping out lately with Grimmy and Mad Master. Because <laughs> there's, three, there's three rows of activity and two rows of arms. <laughs> mm -hmm. that, that, right. that, puzzle needs five, that puzzle needs five height because the regent is five height. Oh, I just booted up that GIF. It's a really good, really good solve if you... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it has that uh, disposal glyph in the middle as like this decorative extra large equilibrium glyph. I love it. All right, um, I think that's a wrap on cycles. Uh, congratulations, is. Team Forty Two, and thank you thank to you. everyone submitted this week. Now um, we move on to cost, which is pretty spicy. Nobody found theory in. Oh, 100 never happened? No, it never happened. Uh, I, okay. I'm just I'm just trying to think. Like, if I were a real, real uh, in-world doctor, would I want the faster version or would I want the cheaper version? I only would give you the faster version. If you wanted to have there be a different option, you would go to a different provider. Your I think the cheaper version should... Calyurees says a hundred is, is says uh, they think a hundred is impossible. Okay, so um, we'll start our journey at twelfth place uh, at one seventy five G. Uh, this is belonging to seven T Storm. It's more. I think this is more just to solve the puzzle solve, but I didn't show it for cycles, so I am showing it here. Only solve that I can. Or the first solve to have the output in the right chamber. Mm hmm I thought this was impossible, but apparently it is not. I had the same as a showcase, but I think it 
was uh, the water input was also in the small chamber, so it only had Ooh, two tracks. Ooh, spicy! Work with three. <laughs> so I think the entire point of this solve is to have a solve where the output is in the right chamber. That was kind of uh, in the notes. Seven T Storm mentions making an experiment on whether it is possible to do this to build in the small chamber, and that it was a success. The solution title also backs up that theory. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, this is so not necessarily a metric focused solve. So we won't critique it along those lines. Um, it's just, yeah, I actually quite like the way it kind of, um, as we watch it build, the first Vitae water pair leaves it on the side, um, gets animismus happening, and it'll build those and. Leave that there, and arm two kind of blocks itself in, completely traps itself, and then just kind of latches this water vitae pair on with a very clutch swing, by the way. And, and then just swing and bond. So that actually, that's a sick swing. So um, I don't know. I think that is a pretty good contender for rotate of the week. I, I don't think swing of the week is a thing that we do here. Oh, uh, this is literally just like I make it up on the spot kind of <laughs> kind of thing. You could so you could say we don't swing that way. <laughs> you could. <laughs> Unfortunately, because it's production, we can't critique how good or bad the Critelli is. No, because Critelli doesn't exist in production. Oh, Re Rebix, all right, Rebix mentioning 100 is provably impossible, so is 105. Um, I guess we'll talk about that when we get to the um, the pointy end of cost. But yeah, mm -hmm. there you go. All right. Um, all right, coming in at 11th place at 120G, we have Cuckoo52. With the quick with so, uh, solution title. <laughs> oh, this is the exact. Um, okay, this is basically what I built when I made the single chamber solve for the input. Oh. Yeah, but <laughs> this is an appealing idea for how you would do cost, but it's not. Yeah. Minimal. <laughs> yeah, it's min plus. It's min plus twenty. Well, min plus well, ten. Theory, apparently. Apparently. Yeah, theory mean plus 20, but, like, practical mean plus 10. Cause if because if you're going to have piston. a piston in the small chamber, and that piston does animismus, then it saves you needing to have four track in the left chamber. But also, if you're going to have animismus in the large chamber, then the piston doesn't need to exist in the small chamber at all. Mm-hmm. Like, much more straightforward. It's actually interesting. So this is a much more it. straightforward execution, I guess, of uh, output in the right chamber. Kind of doesn't make it look as interesting as the last solve did, but it does get the job done. The fact, that, yeah, the fact that it does it tracklessly is uh, worth is worth its share of uh, uh, praise. It's worth, it's, worth, it's worth applauding. Yeah. Other than that, um, very, uh, uh, I, I guess the left chamber, it's pretty straightforward. Um, do need a minimum of four hexes of track to access animismus. Um, let's do a weird two-arm thing, but then don't do that. Um, <laughs> I'm just it's the same cost. Four, four hexes of track is 20G, and one fixed the arm is 20G, so it's the same cost. Right. Um, anyway, uh, so this is the only 120G solve submitted. Um, if we have a look at our top 10, uh, coming in 10th place at 115G is Mr. Puzzle. Huh. How much track do you have to use to get there? Three track on the small chamber. Interesting. Three track, track on the small chamber. It definitely makes the right. It definitely makes the left chamber very straightforward. Mm-hmm. 
you have just enough hexes to be able to do that on 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 the right chamber as well. Right, you got everything, just enough. Everything at full access with the arm in the corner, which gives you like extra translational slash swing space. So once you reach the output, uh, I, I hate to tell you, Mister Puzzle, but um, one ten will make you kick yourself. <laughs> yeah, it's very what? different in terms of what does what. Like 110 seems like impo impossible until you've seen 110 solve and then you think you're stupid. It's For that sort worth, of thing. Josh, if you had never told me that seven hexes right chamber was ever an iteration, I would not have found 110. <laughs> Sorry for spoiling you. <laughs> it's not like that's a logical connection to make, but I was like, oh wait, yeah, you just circle with the, with the debugger. Oh man, I'm thinking I'm about so the. Sorry, I'm thinking about the twenty next year, and like, I I don't want to like police spoilers, but because this community can, like reads into every comment so well and knows everything so much, it's like, oh god, it's impossible to police really when you're like. Because because even with the best of intentions, people can just kind of like figure stuff out with a comment. Exactly. Like it's this this community is so smart that it just deduces things from the slightest of breadcrumbs. It's insane. We're too smart for our own good. <laughs> exactly. Like when this said something like, "It seems like the best instruction solves are about half the best cycles solves," and I thought. I think I have the best cycle solved, so my instructions need to drop by like twelve. And I did a last minute instructions rework. Oh, and you, you got so, so many more off. points doing that. It has been decreed that we shouldn't talk about puzzles. Period. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. I'm joking. Simply <laughs> mute the entire Discord server. Everyone just leave the Discord server for a couple months. We can't trust ourselves. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. It's like on. that meme. It's like that oh. meme where that guy is pointing the gun at his, at his own neck. <laughs> oh my god! I told my wife that I won cycles, and she says, "Yes, that's impressive for an area meme." <laughs> <laughs> y'all have y'all have ruined it. Fuck yes. <laughs> that's all I am well, now. Well, well, to be fair, in production, area is the zeroth metric. So well done. Cool. Cool. What a what a W wife you have, Biggie. <laughs> w wife. I mean, right. the, the, the word wife starts with a W. I'm 90% sure, I'm 90 sure that uh, Biggie is joking when she talks about having a wife. Uh, we got married last November, actually. Okay, I stand corrected. <laughs> All right, so can we move on to ninth place now? Yeah, so coming at ninth place, we are uh, actually... So 10th place was the only 115G. Sorry, Mr. Puzzle. <laughs> um, at ninth so place, now we're at practical min. Or apparently, according to Rebix, actual min. So Kelly Reese is coming in at 110. At 200, so I'll just read the instruction count from now on. So this comes in at 240i. I mean, Callie Racist oh. is starting to think they're uh, mentioned in Twitch chat that they were getting worried that their min cost solve was uh, overcomplicated. What is this it doing? Is. Yeah. Oh, okay, Mr. Puzzle. Callie Racist's solution is Lester Syrup deck. It's not 110's only option. <laughs> so, apparently, the Syrup is lustrous here. Syrup is lost. I assure you, there are not another eight people who have solves just like this one. Yeah. Uh, what the I'm... fuck is this doing? <laughs> I am staring at this and I have no idea what this is doing. Caliuresis, what is magic do you do? Well, the magic is that they have a D bonder where they can only access one half. And you only can get uh, away with that bonder. You have two bonds in your input. I just want to be, I just want to be pedantic, it's called the glyph of unbonding, not the glyph of debonding. I'm okay, never well, going to call it I've that I've been playing Space Chem for the I'm past sorry. few weeks, 
I've been playing Space Camp for the past few weeks, would they call it the instruction of unbonding? Or debonding, sorry, the debond instruction. It'll it'll be a cold day in hell before I call it the unbonder. Just <laughs> I can't do it. Well yeah, this is a build order. Apparently entropy is always increasing, so it's never gonna get colder in hell. It, it, yeah, hey, yeah, I, 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 that supports my point, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> so the th so the the extra ten G here is from the trap in the output chamber. Uh, I've I've, I've gotten a suggestion. I should call it the anti join togetherer. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> sure, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right. So I, I've been, I've been, I have actually been staring at this, trying to pass it. So I guess the main idea, it will always. So it's kind of funny because the inputs are kind of in opposite chambers, and um, so the salt needs to make it to this layer right chamber water has to make its way straight to the left chamber um just because access points on one's got all of them in the world and there's no room for the yeah water region in the left chamber so um it'll do the lustrous syrup thing here but kind of with track um so it looks weird the idea is that it will try and bond the vitae with the water before debonding the salt and then sends the salt back and with the second one, it'll do the same thing here, except um, it'll just kind of be like this weird intermediary where it'll have to like fix those bonds again later. But in the meantime, it just worries about getting that animismus out because we need mores to actually put this thing together. And then when the mores comes, it'll um, kind of make, yeah, so it'll it'll bond the mores and then debond them into pairs. And suddenly the build order gets a lot more straightforward. Um, mm. they bonded product parts. Yeah, so now you can actually just like get it into a bonded product. Here, the water can just go straight on, and you need one more VT Mills pair, and they're just going to come out of the conduit. Mm -hmm. Interesting Pretty nice. The conduit the end is there. Like a buffer storage spot. You can put as many different things on the conduit as you need, and they'll come back later. Mm hmm. But interesting that we have a z that we have a half access unbonder. We do. Yeah, you got to be careful yeah, with half that half access bonder. bonder. Half access unbonder and half access bonder. Half access un un re d d unbonder. <laughs> half. half the, like at the, at some point, we're just gonna be like the Bob ACU levels where you have forty billion knots and you have to count them. Like, oh, do I have an even or an odd number of knots here? <laughs> this is a not 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 bonder. <laughs> <laughs> Classic psychronics uh, community moment. All right, um, gonna move on. Um, Coming soon to a server near you, Opus is Magnum. <laughs> work no, is great. That's actually, that's actually no, great idea. is work. Great is work. Opus is Magnum. Great is work. <laughs> so cringe. <laughs> All right. Um, so coming in eighth place, I regret to inform. <laughs> I regret to inform Cali Racist that his solve was overcomplicated because eighth place is like m like minus seventy two um, instructions. Instruction. If, if I'm counting correctly, no, I'm not. It's sixty two. No, I was not counting correctly. Uh, one seventy eight is um, uh, Ebenov. Still enough space to make player search tiring. Well, yeah, we've seen that. This also has a half access debonder and a half access bonder. This isn't any less complicated. Okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> but this one has a length two, uh, has a length two arm instead of a length one arm. So yeah, that uh, saves a lot of instructions, but it's not less conceptually complicated. True. It is, a, 
It is slightly easier to pass than the last one. Um, I think it kind of accomplishes its debonding, rebonding shenanigans with a little less hassle. Did you, uh, like on the topic of still enough space? Did you know that if you s change the uh, waters in the output to gold and give a single lead as inputs and enable purification, then you can reach gold and process the stabilized vitae in the right chamber without using all of the left chamber as a buffer. That would be a much more painful puzzle. <laughs> I would not enjoy you making us do that for cycles. That suddenly becomes a slog. Yeah, I did not want to do that at all, because then, again, to connect back to what I said before we even looked at the solves, Remove that would the be... Bullshit. Yeah, that wouldn't be removing the bullshit, that would be reintroducing bullshit, and I'm like, no, fuck that, that would be having bullshit, I don't want to have bullshit in my puzzle, I just want to have the interesting part, which is this thing. It's cool that this is simple enough to be, like, focused. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I like the move when it goes and debonds the two Vitae from each other while holding on to a third Vitae. That's pretty slick. Let's have a look. Uh, so yeah, it, it kind of I do like how it just kind of debonds the salt straight away. That's a lot less hassle than what Calyrasis needed to do with the Luster Syrup tech. Um, and then it just kind of sets up so all three Vitae are in this kind of weird conglomerate. It will debond one and then kind of position it's this itself. Move that makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's a, there's, I don't know, there's, there's some kind of nice pivoting happening there. Um, and you just get this, like, nice, um, caltrops. And then from there, it's just a matter of bonding the water. And yeah. And product. Pretty nice solve, unfortunately not. Good enough to be top five, but still nice to look at. Okay, so now I think we're getting onto the less complicated solves. <laughs> um, maybe I'm wrong. And the business can be in the big chamber. <laughs> may maybe I maybe maybe I'm wrong again, but coming in at seventh place, um, we drop down forty five cycles. To one thirty instructions. Sorry, instructions. <laughs> forty-five sorry. That would be funny, but no. Um, <laughs> one, forty-five instructions to one thirty-three with username void. Okay. So I think this is the le this is the less complicated method. Um, there you can we just... go. <laughs> There's can, enough can... space to do this, and it's still one ten. You just. <laughs> you make the seven hex right chamber. I could hear you. I could hear you internally thinking, "What were you thinking? Just do put everything in the left chamber." Calyrius yes. frustrated that you're allowed to use pistons. Yes, Calyrius, you are allowed to use pistons for cost in here because you could just remove true track and put a piston. And yeah, you you just remove it, all track but two, and then you put a piston, and there we go, 110. <laughs> oh, also, so just to say, so, sorry, just gonna take a moment to say hello, best. Welcome from bed. <laughs> or you're in bed, but hello, best. Hello, hello, best. How's it going? Colin is Jordy Pop. Colin. Okay, so, um, I think this is method, if I'm not mistaken. Um,. So here is the most kind of straightforward implementation. So yeah, cost kind of becomes a lot simpler now because once you realize you can just have like a piston on a track and have that solve like everything except for inputs and debonding, then yeah, you just kind of get that to do all the work. So it's a, I think it's mostly a matter of how efficient can you get everything bonded together because there's not quite enough space to make bonding itself like all that straightforward you still have to play around with bonding orders and whether you bought like how like what molecules do you do first as you see we here we've got like the caltrops idea again where you get all the vt on first and do the water at the end has to do a fair amount of pivoting to get all those water bonds on so we'll see if there are alternative ideas to handle that part 
Yeah, like that movement there, uh, that spaghetti movement there, is is costing username void quite a lot of instructions. Spaghetti movement, I like that. <laughs> it wasn't even. That's not even my terminology. That's that's Biggie's terminology. That's good terminology. That. What was it again? I didn't hear. Spaghetti movement. It's like spaghetti I, code, but it's for open. Did I use that to describe? I think there was some conditional logic yeah. called this made that had four spots for a piston, and it was spaghettiing in three of them and doing the right thing in the other. Yeah, like I, I, I remember looking. I think it was in the recap video of volatility and tranquility. And you said something about spaghetti movements. No, uh, I think uh, yeah, the one bit the cost, Biggie's. Uh, I think the one the Biggie's. Cost solves. I think the one Biggie's talking about. I think it was Brookie's tournament, and it was the production puzzle for Brookie's tournament. Emergency antidote. Yeah, yeah and it was exactly. instructions, and Bist Sol was like all conditionals, and it was like what the. F fuck is happening here because it was just like 98 percent conditionals and nothing was ever actually being grabbed it just looked like noodling yeah <laughs> uh, noodling yeah that's what you call it noodling <laughs> i have certainly made solves where i noodle about and somehow the product gets made that's the magic of office magnet for you i think unless there's another shift in tech between this and the winning. I just don't see where all the instructions go. Is this like within 20 instructions of winning? Um. Oh, do I say that? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Um, no, I'm, no. Just, I'm curious. All right. Moving on. We will be moving on to Team 42 solve next at sixth place. 125 instructions. One thing that's funny to note, Genius42 and I both took this exact layout and tried to program it independently without looking at each other's attempts. Yeah. We both took 125 instructions. That is... Mine took 515 cycles and his took 513 cycles. So his was submitted and then we sent... It was like we this... thought the same way about it. This is literally the same right, left chamber and a flipped version of the right chamber. It has the water input, um, not the water input, I mean, it has the conduit closer to the track. In username voids, it was in the corner, and in this one, it's along the edge. I will say you and might also be... oh. and note that in this one, you don't build the full animismus uh, caltrops before you start bonding waters. Mm hmm. I do think that helps a bit, yeah, because you get you get a couple of extra bonds in before you have to do the spaghetti movement thing. Um, no one else submitted a 125 instruction solve for what it's worth, so that was that really was just you and Genius42 <laughs> thinking similarly. Uh, the, the notes briefly read: cannot see an easy way to one sixth p this and reduce instructions that way. Well, we'll see if fractional p comes to play in the end. We'll see if that happens. Fractional p. I just, is it one possible? third p is mm, no. It's just like it's really hard to imagine getting partial utilization of the single atom inputs when all you have to work with is the arm with no track. Yeah, this. Oh, this is weird. An arm with no track kind of sounds like the Opus Magnum version of a horse with no name. <laughs> I came to the chamber with an arm with no track. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, fractional P. Is it possible? Is it even worth it? We will find out. Um, coming in at a dead tie... No, wait, it's not a dead tie. No, sorry, I lied. Um, <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> All right, so this is all right. This is just a slight fuck up on my part. So Biggie, you actually did make top five. Um, oh. So the fuck up was I had I included Rebix separate to the weekly gang, but it really is just the weekly gang. Oh. So this is just the weekly. Everyone gang gets a free place in fourth place. So everyone before this point, you can bump your place up by one. So yeah. Uh, so congratulations, Cuckoo Fifty Two, for making top ten. Oh, dang. Yeah, Rebix was complaining in the chat, like, 
oops, when the, uh, the Solve by Asian Name Void came up, but it, it seemed like if Rebix managed to get a solve that is using animismus in small chamber and still has lower costs. Oh, wow. Lower in This is more complicated. This is just like the Caliuresis thing. It's like, oh, this is more complicated than it needs to be, but literally made it work. So, yeah, because uh, I think Re Rebix just kind of is is a cost main and is also production brained and this is exactly <laughs> the kind of thing Rebix would kick ass at. Rebix has kind of managed to worm their way to fourth place anyway. <laughs> but yeah, this is um animismus in the in the right chamber. Um and we're back, we're back to this, it's just one sixth pay, I think. Half. It's okay. half pay. Oh, sorry, half pay. My bad. Rebix claiming to have idiot syndrome. <laughs> I don't understand how it only grabs the water twice. Oh, it's just using a different rotation initially. So it gets it twice and one and three times, or twice and one and once in the other for a total of three. Gosh, this is so difficult to have come up with, and it's like three instructions better than I think <laughs> what is a super simple approach. <laughs> <laughs> The surprising amount of overcomplicating went on this week. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Caliuresis and Rebix are both, like, huge brain. But this puzzle didn't need huge brain to get to these scores. <laughs> yeah, no, you sh yeah, no, you need a pretty small brain to get you better, good scores here. Like, that's sometimes the curse of, of having knowledge. That sometimes you overcomplicate things and you don't realize when you've done that. Right, you burden yourself with all this extra fancy tech that you know you can make work and that becomes more of a burden than a blessing. And sometimes the simple approach really does like help more than you think it will. I'm reminded of that time Genius42 came in second place on a production instructions puzzle. And the VI it, puzzle, yeah. The VI puzzle. And it was such a good, simple idea, but it was... And it, it beat everyone. It nearly beat Rebix on that one. Um, Is this artificial ore? No, nah, it wasn't artificial ore. It was brazing cathode. Ah. No, nah, Rebix kicked everyone's ass in brazing cathode. Uh, artificial ore, VI. That was a <laughs> small one. brain for small chamber, says random guest. <laughs> small brain for small chamber. <laughs> Oh, so I'd, wa I'd walk us through the solving process, but I'm, I struggle a bit with ghost grabs here, so you'll have to bear with me. So apparently this is... I know, go ghost grabs are always difficult to analyze, no matter who you are, I think. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, but especially if you're me. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... Zorflex and no computation hater. <laughs> that's me. Has someone already mentioned that there's a uh, exchange grab that yeah, drops a, the swap through and then it goes... There is a conduit swap that happens here. I think it's about... I, th I, think we, I think we passed it, actually. It's the very first salt that goes through. Yeah, right. And that's purely because this is half pay. That'll just do that on the first pay, but not the second pay, I'm guessing. Yeah, because, like, the way uh, the good oh, yeah. works is you got to conditionally grab... If you're doing half B, you got to conditionally grab the outputs of the glyph yeah, when no. it's available. I remember on day one when I was tryharding, Rebix had mentioned in chat that I made a very bold claim our current GI solve just outright wins doesn't have much it tech, it's very solid. What is and then this it didn't. salt, or what were the stats of that salt? The, which, um, oh. the one that you claimed was winning. I think, no, I think this was the one that he claimed to be winning. Built before seven hours had passed? Yeah, roughly. Oh. Yeah, roughly about um, that. Um, okay. was that your first cost submission? Biggie? 
Was no, I, I didn't make any claim. I was looking in oh. the weekly chat, and um. Rebix had said that. Oh, that yeah, was... Yeah, Rebix um... made... Oh, that was this. That was this. Oh, okay. This was made in the first seven or eight hours. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. It yeah. was submitted at UTC the 26th of August at 4.43 a.m. It was like three hours into the... That's so summer. fast. <laughs> right? It's it's made in three big. hours. That's another layer of impressive, because this is so big brain, but it also seems like it's the natural and fastest way of trying to solve it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's insane. Tarasel. That is insane to me. <laughs> Yeah, Taurus, it wasn't quite top uh, level uh, quality, but it, it it came pretty good. But it's not the best, unfortunately. Um, one thing I'm trying to wrap my head around: if this is half pay, how does it grab two orders on one and one on the other loop? Yeah, I, I asked that same question early on. Alt click the beginning of Arm 2's tape. I think it's 180 degree offset. Oh, weird. It does two grabs in the spot oh. that it is in one of them and one grab in the spot for the other. Oh, that is that is weird. <laughs> Fuck. It's just too much. It's too smart. I don't Bro, how do you anyway. calculate that so quickly? Hundred and Red oh my God. moment. That is speaking of yeah, speaking of that claim Rebix made to me, in the same about the same conversation, um I said to him that it's pretty much impossible to make a, a dubious cost puzzle these days with this community because this community is too damn good at cost. Let's just get that out of the uh, out there. It's too good at the damn good at cost. It's solved. It's all solved. <laughs> I will cling on to fragrant powders with every dying breath until it is disproved or found. But in, yeah, literally everything else, um, not dubious. Oh, there's that one puzzle Biggie made that's dubious, right? Channeling Crystal, crystal. I think it's called. The Channeling Crystal Complete, I think, has been disproven. There's actually a difference that a single bond makes in 10 gold a puzzle. Oh, that is, that's funny, but also I'm sad it actually got disproved. Um, <laughs> if we're talking about dubious costs, though, another production puzzle I made is alcohol to fatty lipid. That one hasn't been proven, man. G yet. Oh, I imagine with the level of scrutiny this community often provides, that uh, you could eventually get an answer for that one. <laughs> Indeed. All right, moving on to top three though. Um, coming in at one hundred and seventeen instructions, we have Hello Jasper. We're back Classic. to method. Working on his own? Oh, yeah, Kazian said that he was taking a break this week. Yeah. And here we have it again. The 3x3, the 3x3 three three, the quote, quote, three three right chamber. So I like the placement of the bond here compared to what we saw in the other ones. I like how it, it feels very central and it's very spacious, so... Yeah, the piston it, feels like it's got a lot to work with. I think this is something I learned watching the cost cycle secondary volatility and tranquility submissions. Yeah. If you're using a glyph more, that glyph gets the primo spot next to your arm, even if it's not the first thing that needs to happen. That's a pretty good ethos for like, and you can apply that to like, it's really good for area when you kind of come up with like an area layout, but also production True. Changes. True. Um, Area production chambers are they are sort of similar though, because I mean, limited yeah. area in both. Yeah, I know Realliance made a joke about this being like restricted area, which it is restricted area in a sense. It's hard restricted area instead of soft restricted area. So, so this this does so a point of improvement against the other method solves is that this does um still have a bit of spaghetti movement, but. Nothing is re-grabbed, and I think that really helps the spaghetti movement feel less annoying than it did with the other ones, and probably contributes to a comfortably lower instructions count than all the other method solves we've seen to this you point. Say nothing, you say nothing is re-grabbed, but there's one thing that's re-grabbed, and that's a VT that gets transported back and forth through the conduits. 
that is technically a regrab, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, so it's, it's look at this. Cool. You have this V chain, and then it just goes back for a salt, and then you get the uh, the V chain again. Right. So you see. The idea is Arm 1 needs that Vite to be out of the way so that it can drop the other salt. And so Arm 2 has to do a conduit phase real quick here to get that other salt in. And Arm 1 can then just like grab, do a grab drop <laughs> operation, wait, well, which is wait, pretty cool. Wait, that is so cool. That is so cool. I had no idea that was even possible. You could just drop two atoms at the same time and they, they don't collide. What oh, the yes, hell? I, I had no idea. Yeah, I think that's saw... amazing that you've learned it in this stream because you're a production main. That's one of the coolest tests. I have, I have no idea. I'm going to implement this in my future production souls. Definitely cool ass production tech. Use it if you can. It is very good. It makes it makes otherwise really annoying problems quite simple, like this one. Because it's like that Vitae is otherwise right in the fucking way. Um. Yeah, I, th I, th I thought they would like ghost collide, but apparently they don't ghost collide. And Amazing. They, they phase through each other. It's kind of cool. <laughs> power of conduits. Pa the power of conduits, yes. Thinking with conduits. Instead of thinking with portals, now we're thinking with conduits. We are thinking with, we are thinking with conduits. That water... Username Void pointing out the water bonding to be better than his. Yeah. Because I think the extra space granted by the good bonder placement lets you not need to re-grab as much and kind of gives you more hexes to like wiggle it into like better wiggles, I guess. <laughs> wiggles. Mm. <laughs> wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Otherwise known as pivots. <laughs> Alright. Moving on to our top two though. Um mm -hmm. in second place. Coming in at one hundred and fifteen instructions is which push two instructions saved uh did i load it or did i fat finger something no wait wait this is three thousand cycles this I, is uh, one did I, not hit F10 properly? I did not hit f10 properly okay we have one sixth p <laughs> it's method but one sixth p method yes it could be done well <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, what is going on? All right. <laughs> this solve requires a high brain power to under understand. So we're back to big brain tech. Um but with <laughs> method, so you can't you guys can't criticize it because it's method. <laughs> I am not big brain enough to understand this. Alright, so let me just read the notes real quick. Uh, I'm not convinced I have min cost. In brackets, he puts a piston on a track. Surely not. <laughs> um, but, I wasn't cost. Able to, but I wasn't able to find anything cheaper, so I started looking at instructions. The right chamber delivers a stabilized Vite every three chain tape loops and an elemental water every two for 1 6th P. It only saves 29 instructions on the 1P solve at a cost of around 2,400 cycles. <laughs> well, it was enough to get you to second place, so... <laughs> okay, so... Alright, so I guess we'll start with the conditional conduiting that happens. So, arm one... Um, cleverly uses the space here to do a single pivot on the Vite. Um, after three pivots, the salt will be accessible. And so, at which point the salt can be grabbed and moved, which will also, like, grab the Vite and move that onto the conditional spot. So that arm one can put both through the conduit. Um, the salt conditional. Um, I think the salt conditional, because the salt... Let's see if I'm wrong here. I think it has something to do with the fact that the salt... The, the, no, I'm wrong. Okay, never mind. How does the water conditional work? It's probably a 180-degree rotation, or, or rather, like, a 60-degree rotation displacement every single uh, tape loop. Yeah, it has to be a rotation displacement. My thought was that it was going to be because the water is two hexes away that that would matter, but then it didn't. <laughs> so, look, look, at, look, at, look at here. It's like, yeah, like, every single time it goes through the tape loop, it's... It, 
it's like one or what what is going on here? So here we have the tape loop here. Like if you do half of your instruction tapes grabbing water, so it's three rotation offsets per tape. then you'll get the three water you need. Yeah, it's doing half of a full rotation per tape, so arm one's only losing three. But it's using pivots to get the right amount of the other output out, which to me is absolutely nuts. Yeah, right. It still pivots every once every tape loop, but it only grabs the water once every two tape loops, which I find impressive. Um, the space coming to the right need. number is hard, but this is the best solve I've ever seen to do it. Yeah, right. Yeah, the spatial reasoning you need to conditionally grab one hex every tape loop, but the one next to it only every second tape loop is really cool. This is an amazing solve. I I wonder what I'm scared to think what beats this. Same. <laughs> this is better, or something that makes this feel like it's overcomplicated. I mean, this is overcomplicated, but in the most simple way. This is simple. This is simple, but it's also overcomplicated. It's over It's overcomplicated in this most simple way. So, using a void pointing out that this is the same left chamber that Biggie had. Not. Same no, chamber, but of course it has to be placed differently. Or it has to be programmed differently. It has to be programmed, yeah. The programming's completely different, but it's the same left chamber. Also, it's technically Genius 42 uh, solve. Oh, is this Genius 42 solve? Yeah, I only programmed my own version of it, but we both programmed it separately. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, but like they, they said it was biggest uh, chamber, but no biggie. Biggie yeah. was not the author of the cost solve. T team, team 42. 42. Team 42 Did solve. No <laughs> but yeah, this is an incredibly overcomplicated simple solve. Well, it's not even overcomplicated, it's second. I think it's earned the complication at second place. <laughs> mm. But, um, so I guess looking at the left chamber, I think the conditionals there are a lot, are a lot more straightforward. It seems to try and do... And it's interesting because it's one sixth p but, um... It just kind of has to iteratively build the vaccine template. Um, because the animismus conditional is kind of simple enough. Just test to see if it'll output. If not, put it in the corner, but... Yeah, almost gives me uh, vanishing material GI vibes. And then suddenly everything magically makes sense when it has like a full vaccine template to work with. Mm -hmm. So mo that's what most of the conditionals are, just like re-grabbing the vaccine template that's like mostly built. Exactly. Alright. Let's have a look at the winning solve coming in at 110 instructions it is fiesta land it's the 110 110 it is the 110 110 uh, it is 1p so simplicity one simplicity small one. brain one small brain one all right let's read the notes oh. here um how did this win <laughs> Our first idea did animismus in the small chamber at Minji and assembly only in the large. Problem was, the Minji anime setup used all the space, so the water input needed to be on the right, and that forced three tracks, adding up to 115. We then realized that doing anime and assembly in the same chamber would mean that all the track requiring elements would be in one spot. That allowed the right chamber to have a cheap and cheerful simple arm. Unfortunately, access didn't quite work out for Minji anime plus conduit plus bonder, so we had to use this min plus 10 large chamber. Um, for secondaries, we did look at ways to do fractional P, but the tactics we considered for pulling a 3 to 2 ratio of water to Vitae required sufficiently expensive conditionals that the straight up 1P was better. 
Good yeah. call, because we saw that that even the biggest of brain fractional piece of it, 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 yeah, five external structures and at the top of the and at the top of the yeah, like salt pile of five instructions is a lot of instructions. Yeah, it didn't matter by much, but it mattered. And username void calls out in chat though that like hmm. this solve and Jasper solve have the good left chamber, but Wishbush and Weekly Gang and Team or Wishbush and Weekly and Team Forty Two had a worse right left chamber for assembly. So if we use Wishbush's right chamber, but this solves left chamber and program it appropriately. Maybe it's the best of both worlds. Hmm. Worth thinking about. Yeah. Extra just, Still thinking yeah. about the puzzle during shit post week. <laughs> post week <laughs> assignment for everyone. See if you can use that and see if you can get it under yeah. under hundred instructions or something. Yeah, and uh, and it's 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 insane that we have cost min, that we have like a primary min where we have two arms, one of them is a piston on a track. <laughs> like, how often do you see that? Not very often. <laughs> so when Rebic said he was, like, programmatically ruling out 100 and 105, I had assumed that that was Animismus left chamber with five or six track to be able to finish all the rest of the deck. Or was that the actual thing being ruled out? I mean, I I mean, I I was thinking like naive uh, theory. Min is four hexes of track for the animismus, two arms, one on bonder, one bonder. That's uh, ten. So, that's so where is G. this? Where is this five or ten G that is almost can almost be saved but not quiet? I was trying to find out. Rebix has confirmed you use five track on the left instead of just four, so that you have access to animismus and the non-animismus things. But there isn't any shape that gives you enough room because, like, similar to how placing the output forced the multibonder in a specific way, animismus is also pretty damn forced so, to the extent where you don't get to access all of the animismus tiles with any one arm on track. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, because the, the way this the way this uh, the output is, no matter where you place it, the output is always going to cover the central hex. Right, yeah. so the idea, I, I'm guessing, is that if you have, like, a normal arm on, like, four tricks, because you, this is what you usually do for, like, cost puzzles with animismus, is just do that. And that's cheaper than a piston on a track. But I'm not seeing a way to, you know, place it. There are lots of, like, if you go channel-wise, there's also other access points that can reach each part of animismus. The problem is that you can no longer place the other glyph i mean yeah. yeah maybe you can do a thing with two trackless arms and then have them communicate through a bondo which sounds fucking terrible <laughs> that's but... something genius suggested and i just didn't have the spoons to try to commit to that after the cycles effort that sounds like a pretty hardcore cycles uh, cost theory thing but but then you'd have to debond in this chamber as well and i'm not saying it yeah it's yeah. Still one ten. Everything that takes two arms is one ten. Yeah. Everything that works that takes two arms. Eugenius mentioned one small arm and one long arm on two track as the way of getting one ten, but it wasn't going to be easier. The piston on track was just too powerful. It is. Yeah. Well, but yeah. Well done on this. Hundred T, hundred ten G, hundred ten I sold. Well done. Absolutely well earned victory. All right, that is um, it's a nice solace, everybody. So that was our last production puzzle for the year. That was our second last puzzle for the year. Let me boot up the shit post puzzle. Do I want to try to have a speed solve for this? Um, <laughs> speed solve at um at your own um. Risk. Yeah. Like, I'm addicted to the speed solving, but it's shit post week. But it's shit post week. That is, uh. 
this is going to be a pretty difficult week because it's going to be a very creatively exhausting week. All right, let me download the puzzle real quick. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll prepare it for speed solve anyway, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I, I, I accept no responsibility for shit posting shenanigans. Um, there we go. Okay, I'll show it on stream and then I'll just quickly go to the website and activate it. So, um, our final weekly puzzle for the year is Salt Packaging Factory. <coughs> um, let me boot it up. Uh, it is now live. <laughs> <laughs> How many regions is that? Let's see if 24. I get them all out. The speed solves might finish before I get all of them out. <laughs> is that you speed solving i can hear clicking piggy actually don't answer that Probably. if you speed solving. i have a no good mic thing going nah that's cool I, I i i'm amused by the clicking ah it's like dopamine <laughs> <laughs> all right now let's see if i get all the clips the he... only metric is shitpost, so I didn't even have to solve the puzzle to be able to submit something. Well, all right, so the metrics are aesthetic and shitpost. So, I don't know. Aesthetic is just shitpost, but don't be, but funniness won't be rewarded quite so much. I don't know, just look pretty. Like, you know. I forgot to dodge you, but that. I have submitted it already. It's earlier than username's void chat message showed up, but someone will have to... I'll verify. Go to the photo finish. So you guys actually did just submit before I got all the read the glyphs out. <laughs> yes, this is a full glyphs puzzle. Full glyphs puzzle. Um. All right, and I. Think yeah, I most just... of it was spent menuing, aka moving files and loading the menu for the custom puzzles. <laughs> all right, uh, I'm sure I can come up with something better, but um, yeah, this <laughs> it's not my best feng shui effort. Uh, and then I'm just going to kind of... Yeah, I know that I've made a puzzle with lots of salt in it, and the goal was to get... Um... A distribution center, it's called. Yeah. The goal was to get but PI, was... but it had only... It had many, many more outputs. Yeah, it had one input and many outputs. Oh, this has many out inputs, but one output. I'm going to figure something out off stream, I think. I think that's going to have to do for now. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, chill, let's let's have a look. Um, num, num, num. And then the calcification. Yeah, it literally is just this in reverse. Uh, I can confirm Biggie bait username void. Yeah, I won the OS speed solve. <laughs> You're not even really solving. <laughs> I don't know, maybe the puzzle part of it mattered a tiny bit, but apparently there was uh, a minute in it, so a minute in it. In it. Um, yeah, congratulations on already winning this speed This is solving. humanity's peak. We've peaked. There's nothing better than this. Haven't, haven't mentioned it, but um, this is Bist's puzzle, so... Is overlap permitted in either of these metrics? Mm, oh, we had it permitted last year. Yes. Cool. There's better options when there's only single atom inputs. I don't. Also, want to may I just say, really? none of the none of the puzzles this year involve metals. This input no. does not involve metals. There was one puzzle with metal in it. Dark well, matter candidate. matter candidate had very very basic metal usage. Wait, wait. Project <laughs> copper. Good my Galaxy is like redesigning the puzzle because he was worried it was too similar to mine. And I just kind of dropped the hint. Hey, maybe you should think about putting metals in it because we literally didn't have a metal puzzle for the whole year. <laughs> so, turns out... Projection math is weird. 
Yeah, no. So it turns out, it turns out this week, this year's weeklies, the glyph of purification never got a proper use. It never actually did. No. Um, you'll have to wait for pure projection math, and you'll have to wait for I don't know next year's tournament for pure projection math. Ooh, spoilers, Zorflex, you're hosting it. Oh yeah, no, the puzzle will have atoms in it. That's another spoiler. Ooh, ooh, ooh. wow, amazing. <laughs> we'll have bombs. Oh. Uh, Oh, oh no, no, I'm not spoiling that. Too far. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Will have metrics? Yes, they will have metrics. <laughs> Interesting. Spoilery. Oh. Will it have Imperials? Imperials? <laughs> well, what? It's the opposite of metrics. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me. All right, all right. On a serious season, let me get the showcase booted up. Uh, it's a really funny showcase, Olivia. Before I before I accidentally spoil my own tournament. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> so. Challenge! Don't spoil a puzzle. A difficulty level impossible. <laughs> I guess we'll go in cost reverse cost order. So starting at, uh, we'll have a look at this three thirty G solve by username void. Um, titled sub HR cycles solve. Um, oh yeah, username Void had mentioned that if we're interested in seeing what their uh, one hour efforts were, they submitted them as showcase. Oh, HR is hour, right. <laughs> all right, so, all right, so yeah, because when you do, when we do, so I think this will be making a return when they're doing the speed solving um, tournament later this year. That Well, not tournament, but whatever, later this year. Usually it's one of the metrics is time taken to solve and the other is, um, Actually, like you get like an hour to optimize. So this is username voids effort after a single hour. It uses two bonders, which is interesting. It does. It works out. Three bonders, even. Oh, right. I forgot there's a third bonder because I was only looking at the place where there's a pair of bonders right next to each other. Right. It did remind me of the two bonder solve a lot. And I'm like, wait. That Moors is like chilling over another bonder. I appreciate that it is 66 area. Very nice. <laughs> the parser is displaying area stats for this. <laughs> the parser shows area. <laughs> the parser doesn't quite know its production. Oh, yeah, the tournament will also have bonder ints. <laughs> Non-bonding bond tinders. <laughs> the kind that undo the... Undo the, <laughs> the bond... Bond uh, glyphs. Alright. So, I may the have just tried to record again. The hang. They undo the bond and hang. Mm. What were you saying, Biggie? Sorry? I may have just tried to record a gif for shit post that crashed my game. <laughs> oh no. Because I forgot to place any instructions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm actually... remember to remember to put instructions on your output, kids. <laughs> Single chamber question mark? Question mark. <laughs> Good job, Mr. Puzzle. If you look very closely, you might notice something slightly wrong about this solve. <laughs> Overlap is allowed here? Well, um, this is showcase. Okay, so. Arms, there's <laughs> arms, yes, but arms. like I can't see the arm bases. <laughs> Would this have crashed if it were not running in the mod? Um, I'm pretty sure that you can only get away with arms in the walls if the bases are one tile further out. This is a valid solution in free space, yeah. Okay, alright, alright. I was about to try and turn it off in-game, um, but no. 
Yeah, I think it. I think it. I think it would have still worked without. The, okay, like, I was. I was wrong. I guess. I think arm bases not crashing into chamber walls works because of the way that collision is detected. I've not played around with this. Area ah. improvement, though. We we went from sixty six to fifty four. Uh, maybe we'll get a genuine single chamber solve. Maybe that'll that will be area optimized. Um. All right, next up, um, username void, uh, who has submitted a sum solve, which I think is just an adaptation of the one hour solve, but more sum wise. Something. Sum. It is. It. It. It's something. Right. <laughs> I, some of, uh, my, like, some, like, intuition is, like, thrown out of whack in a production chamber. I'm not really the some- really want it to be fast because cycles count and instructions count are kind of correlated. Yeah. It has to be efficient. Yeah. I'm not the, I'm not the sum optimizer I am in a free space context. I mean, in free space, area and cost usually tend to go hand in hand in some. Yeah, usually, usually they're correlative. Um, here, it's just like you don't get that idea at all, and it's just instructions. And do you fractional pay or not? Mm. Often no, but sometimes yes. I think. I have one production sum record. I think it's some um, hex stabilized salt. But yeah, um, moving on. Um, Biggie Max submitted a showcase here. It cost, but I did it wrong. Yeah, this is not. Um novel necessarily it's been done by two others but this does have the water input in the chamber that's doing assembly so it's a little bit more constrained i thought uh, I, yeah I thought you that... did cost wrong yeah yeah cost but you did it wrong i agree you did it wrong here <laughs> how Damn. is this wrong i mean it's, it's not, not optimal um... yeah like it's not 110 g so it's wrong well, it's also the piston on the track usually went in the big chamber in method, and here it's in the small chamber, which is uh, backwards. Mm -hmm. It was mostly just trying to meme about, hey, you can build the output of the small chamber, which a couple of real cost submissions also did. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I, I bet it was one of those things that Cuckoo52 did as like a semi-joke thing, where it's like, it is uh, a pretty decent cost solve, but, you know. Yeah, and Cuckoo's was actually 10 gold cheaper because the piston did not need a track because there wasn't, um, the, the water input was in the main chamber instead. Oh, how, how dare you attempt to meme, Biggie? I mean, come on, you, uh, this is a dead serious stream. I would never joke about something like this. <gasps> I don't know if my gasps even come through. It came through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a little, I'm a little bit annoyed that the left chamber isn't rotated, so that the glyph of animismus isn't presented exactly as, as it is presented in the tray, but oh well. Alright, having a look, um, and the next solve um, is username voids sub one hour gold solve. So, this is their best effort after an hour, and it was 10g cheaper. Than the last one. The Super Mario 64 and Super Mario Sunshine number. Nice, nice. 120. Interesting. Because... This... Oh, it's because, because... there's a demon under the energy. Because both games have 120 power stars under 20 in Chinese price, respectively. Yeah, there's not room for deep under and the water in the main chamber, in the Animismus chamber, if there's four tracks. Speaking of uh, other video games, I hope you all enjoyed my Majora's Mask music posting you know, I did. relative to the deadline passing through. I did. I agree with you and Goodbye Galaxy and that it's the best Zelda game. I nice. Think, I think you, you and Goodbye Galaxy have great taste in that regard. 
I found a video that analyzes the themes of Majora's Mask. It turns out there's a lot of esoteric Buddhism in it. Esoteric what? Buddhism. Buddhism, okay. I know, just the whole impending doom thing just kind of gave it this, like, atmosphere that I really like. Yeah, I also like that the, that the citizens of Tarma don't give a shit about you. That's the best part. <laughs> and it's like, it's kind of interesting to have a Zelda game where it's like, it isn't like, you know, a modern Zelda game where everyone's just like, oh, I have this, like, small problem and can you, like, like, like give me 10 rupees and, wow, this is great, let me give you a gift. It's like everyone actually freaks the fuck out. Exactly. Uh, all right. That's, yeah. And then we have we have a couple of more showcase souls, don't we? Uh, only one more. Um, ah, it's the funny one. This is uh, <laughs> this is another cost. I thought soul. the one chamber soul question mark was funny. No, this one is the funniest. Oh, it's not in the chamber at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's a zero chamber solve. You guys wanted a one chamber solve. That's actually so cool, though, that it manages to use no track. It's trackless gold, but it's the same as min gold. It actually is you trackless can get away gold. With it with that, input. that is actually cool, now that you bring it up. Because everything's it's full because access. Because conduits exist, you can exchange single atoms with a conduit. <laughs> oh, so that's how they can communicate with each other. It's oh, like you that... can exchange with uh, bonded stuff, but that only means one arm will ever be able to hold on to uh, salt. <sighs> that makes me want a theory. Conduit. That makes me want a theory craft a puzzle that's like it has a trackless gold metric, but there's a conduit, so you can do something like this where the arms can communicate where usually they wouldn't. And I wonder how you can make that, like, an interesting thing. In a I seem to recall those, like, infinitely tiled, like, fractal... Or, no, tessellation uh, was also interesting. Tessellation throughput? I think that metric is oh, called... Oh, yeah, yeah. Love Why is it. it specifically throughput and not, like, other metrics? Uh... Because the metric is TT. <laughs> well, it's, oh. it's because the most useful thing to do is per unit space you have to optimize something and if you want to optimize rate then it scales correctly with product per area per time no 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 let's just optimize area per unit space yeah, we had a big discussion about this months ago i remember like there was like people like biggie and shadow cluster talking about this a lot and they're really like they're, like yeah tessellated area maybe but yeah, this, other than that, it's like, really, rate really is one of the only metrics you can do tessellation, unfortunately, and have it still be, like, meaningfully challenging. I think maybe yeah, area? Because, I don't see why area can't be tessellated. That would be kind of cool. The th thing is, is, is the tessellation uses the infinite nature of the Orbis Magnum, so you got to have an infinite metric to join it with it, and rate is, like the obvious choice there. Yeah, if you, if you wanted to do tessellation area, then the actual thing you'd be optimizing was products per unit area. Yeah, but yeah, I exactly. I believe in that case, it's actually optimal to just have a, the sparsest possible stations for actually creating well, I mean, I mean, And then I mean, technically, the of product glyphs that you drop them into. Yeah, technically, with tessellation area, it is infinite from cycle one. Fun fact: well, it's, it's area per product. But area per product has the problem where you get to just place more products. Tessellation throughput is a well-defined metric. Come, come, well-defined another metric, and we'll talk. Fun fact from Mr. Puzzle: Buoyant cable has a cheaper min when you use conduits. What does oh. sir? Buoyant cable. Buoyant cable. Yeah, that's the one that gets you the golden, golden thread tech because it doesn't really need all of its access points. You just make two of them into conduits and you can get around one of the inputs. I think I think you're right. Yeah. But yeah, I think a conduit just solves the problem you have and you can just bring everything down onto a bonder in the same direction. Yeah. 
Never is thought about it like that. Cool also solve this conduit, or is there not enough access there? Oh, Wait. also, according to Mr. Puzzle, if you're in vanilla game, that one, uh, you can just have arms chilling in the, uh, in the walls. <laughs> It just works. The game doesn't check for that. It only checks when placing them. If you somehow manage to get a save file where they're already placed, then the game's just like, yeah, whatever, this is fine. Oh, yeah, well, that wasn't... makes sense, actually, because if you press P for area counting, then the game does count the chamber walls for area. Yeah, it automatically counts the chamber walls. Yeah, right, but anything one more space further away would be incorrect, or would be invalid, and the game wouldn't let you do it, even if you did whatever puzzle solution editing trickery you wanted. <laughs> I mean, no, no, but you can't do that with just normal overlap tech. Uh, Mr. Imagining... Google mentioned overlap in production is cursed with examples that aren't cloning and then uh, cloning. <laughs> All right, yeah, the conduit. <laughs> What's a clone do it? If you bond and debond an atom that is on top of the conduit to another atom, it'll appear on the other conduit but without being used up, so you can actually just get more of it. <laughs> Wait, it, it duplicates your atoms? You can you can create atoms where atoms were not. You don't even need to grab the inputs more than twice in a one atom uh, overlap production puzzle. I this is cursed knowledge. This is arcane mm. knowledge. <laughs> yeah, luster with a single input's my favorite example too. Wow. <laughs> oh, so Super. when the syrup is really really lustrous, <laughs> does the till still yeah. taste like luster? Yep. Caliuresis points out that if you have a Burlo's wheel, any atoms that were cloned from each other all duplicate the same. So you can do spooky action at a distance. <laughs> Burlo dupe in one chamber and the atom in the is, other chamber changes. Is again. this is this like quantum entanglement in Opus Magnum? <laughs> it's I mean have you ever really have... didn't expect people to figure this out. <laughs> I mean we already have quantum bonds in Opus Magnum. That's already a thing. Quantum bonds is cool, oh my... actually. I don't know what quantum bonds are. They both do exist and don't exist? They don't appear as a bond, but the atoms move as a bonded pair. So you have just pair of atoms that are connected, but without a bond graphically between them. And to actually unbond them, you need to create and then break a bond somewhere <laughs> in the same molecule. So it's and like... they, this, quant this quantum bond can be arbitrarily large as well. They can be... Yeah, the, the atoms we are can be arbitrarily far away from each other. Yeah, there's a beautiful puzzle that has three chambers in a production setting, and there's one input that you have that's three atoms quantum bonded, quantum bonded together that all go in one in each chamber, and you have to solve the puzzle in the, that condition. Is, is oh, this God. Is, is this the precision machine oil question mark puzzle? I think so. <laughs> Yeah, quantum bonds are like bonds that the game doesn't realize exist, so you can't debond them because the game's like, what bond? But you're like that bond, but there's and no. Then there, and, then, and then it's the cursed ones where you just have a floating bond uh, out to there. You, I have a terrible idea that I would like to tr to uh, see if it works. If you use a clone to it to clone a metal. Does that cause all the metals to upgrade at the same time? That's a good question. I don't know if that's been... Let's test it. Could be worth testing. Good question. I think we're about... I think we're ready to wrap this up. We are, like, yes. If you purify it, or project it, or whatever the one is that uses Quicksilver, does that upgrade both of them? We gotta learn this one outside of this stream, I think. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. that's going to have to be a question for either a different stream or a not stream. <laughs> because but yeah, this... I'm, I am glad that so many people seem to enjoy this puzzle. I'm, I'm, I'm very glad for that. I liked that this puzzle 
I, I, I don't know. It felt like a good penultimate puzzle leading into the shit post week. I like the pacing of just like having this where the solution space isn't like scary big or something and you don't have to make like a big 800G I'm, I'm so behemoth. curious as to what kind of shit post we're going to get. I am looking forward to it. Uh, we've got a couple speed cells. I kind of, I kind of want to do a thing where I recreate puzzles from previous years. Yeah. Uh, actually, that, that'd be a good shit post idea. I think no, I'll like, be... actually, I can, no, like, I can make my own, a DIY sweeper rod or something. Well, it's funny enough, because... The... No, you're spoiling things, Rubik, so don't do a lot of shit. <laughs> spoiling a shit post. Oh, no. Um, all right. But for real, this has been a great stream. Thank you very much, Yosh, for the puzzle, and for everyone for submitting, and for... Yeah. Being, and for... You're, being, and yeah. And for Biggie Rubik's, joining me on commentary. Yeah. Thank you for. Thank you for. Thank you for accepting the puzzle. Of regions, the two columns of regions are like different brightnesses in the game on the left there. Yeah, it's because the lighting's weird. Um, yeah, it's because the lighting comes from like the middle of the screen, so the lighting's just a bit weird. But yeah. But yeah, just once again, thanks so much for featuring my puzzle. I I wasn't sure, but yeah, thank yeah. you all for featuring the, my puzzle. It was very nice. That was really and good. we'll see you back here next week for your shittiest and also most aesthetically pleasing uh, versions of salt packing. Pack that salt. When you get back here next week, I want to see that salt packed. <laughs> all right. I'll wrap that up there. Thank you very much, everyone. I'll catch you next week. Nice.